All right, students. So in class, we saw the demonstration with the two speakers. And when we had two speakers producing the same sound, we were getting a louder sound. When we had one speaker doing the opposite of the other speaker, we were getting a softer sound. This is happening because of what we call wave interference. So you should take notes on this in your concept catalog. We'll start with this. Wave interference is when two waves overlap, forming a resultant wave of greater or lower amplitude. And as we learned from our sound lab, amplitude corresponds to loudness. This is different from the Doppler effect where we were seeing a change in pitch, which happens from greater or lower frequency. Wave interference comes in two varieties. If the waves are overlapping to create a greater amplitude, we call that constructive interference. And this happens when the crest of one wave overlaps the crest of the other. Crest overlaps crest. However, the waves could overlap in such a way where the crest of one wave overlaps the trough of the other, and we call that destructive interference. And from it, we get lower amplitudes. So in that case, the crest of one overlaps the trough of the other. Let's draw some diagrams so we can see what we mean by this. So if I start off with a wave, I'm just going to draw sine waves. They're the easiest to think about. If I have a wave like that coming in, and I add to it another wave, and I'm trying to draw them lined up so that these crests are overlapping, like so, what I'm going to get, what it's going to equal, what it's going to result in, is a wave that is twice as high, twice the amplitude. And so in the case of sound waves, you would hear it as being louder. Let's take a look at the destructive interference. We'll start again by drawing a sine wave. And this time we're going to try to draw the opposite wave, like this. So now we can see that the crest of one overlaps the trough of the other. And when these waves add together, what we get is no wave. We would call this an example of complete or total destructive interference. Let's take a look at how this can be applied to noise canceling headphones. Here we see a diagram explaining how noise cancellation works. You have this blue incoming ambient sound. So it could be the sound from a plane or trains or a bus engine or anything loud. And as that wave in blue, as this wave here, comes in to the, um, to the headphone part, there's a little microphone in there. And that sound is picked up by the microphone and it's sent to noise cancellation circuitry. The circuitry is really small, it's built into the headphone. And that circuitry flips the sound, and, um, or what we might say inverts, as the word is being used over here. And it sends it back to the headphone speaker. So what you see then is the, the red, which is now canceling the noise, the blue. And so you get no sound, or very little. They usually don't completely cancel the sound. Um, and the nice thing is that on top of that, you can put the sound that you want to listen to. So if you're listening to music, for example, then you put your, your music sound wave on top of that. And so you can hear it on top of a um, quiet background. All right, so pretty cool. Um, I don't have a pair myself, but I think it's pretty awesome, especially when in a noisy place. Uh, let's take a look at the demo that we did in class. So in the speaker demo in class, you should put this in your concept catalog. Speaker demo. That would be another example we saw. So let's draw our speakers. We'll draw them like this. And facing each other. The speakers have a little part in there that vibrates. I think I'll draw the part that vibrates in gray. All right, so as that part vibrates, it was putting out sound waves. And uh, we can show the sound waves coming out like 
like this. That's the way we often draw sound. Um, but what does that really represent? It represents, and I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit here. Okay. So it represents the, the crest of the wave or the, the compressions. So um, these would be the compressions coming in. And I would draw this wave like this. If I were going to draw this the way that Logger Pro was drawing it, yeah, it'd be like that. Okay. The other speaker, so with one speaker, you know, we get a certain amount of sound out of it, a certain amount of loudness. If we show the sound waves coming out of the other speaker, I'm going to use a yellow for this. Well, I'll use red because you don't have yellow. I'm trying to make it easy for you. All right, so now this one is putting out sound also. Okay, as you can see, the way that these two sound waves would interfere, uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to show its sound waves in black. So it's going to be like, okay, so that's a good way. You can draw it that way in your, in your concept catalog. This would be an example of what kind of interference. Hopefully you're recognizing that it's constructive interference. The crests of the green wave are overlapping the crests of the red wave. And therefore we are getting a resultant overall louder wave. And if I were to draw that, that might make it a little too messy. But maybe I'll kind of show that that would make waves that are twice as tall. Where it overlaps. So this would definitely be constructive interference. And it makes a louder sound. Okay, you ready to take a look at um, when I flip the switch and make speaker number let's take out speaker A and speaker B, A and B. When I make speaker B do the opposite of speaker A, we're going to get destructive interference. So let's take a look at that below. All right, so we're going to draw our speakers again. Speaker A, speaker B, and the little part of the speaker that vibrates. Okay, um, and we'll draw the sound waves. Try to use the same color as the last time. So we have sound waves. And we'll draw that, we'll draw it as a transverse. It's much easier to visualize transverse. Let's zoom in on this, that would be helpful. Okay, so. Okay, uh, and then let's draw the sound waves for speaker B. Here we have to be kind of careful because we're going to want them to be overlapping in the middle. So it's going to have to be like this, like that. Let me redo that last one, can I? No. And um, so it's going to be kind of like this. And we'll draw, what did we use last time for that? We used um, do we use black? Um, oh, yeah, we use black. Okay, so in this case now, these sound waves would look like this. Let me redraw that. Kind of like up here. 
You can see where we're going with this. You can work ahead. And feel free. Okay, so it's gonna be like whoop, whoop, like that. The point is that these speakers were doing the opposite of each other. So in the middle there, where they're overlapping, we are getting no wave, no sound. Now again, we weren't getting complete cancellation of the sound because as you can see, the way that these waves interfere, this green one might be kind of going off there and this red one might be kind of going off. And, um, so there was some leakage of sound, if you will. Uh, all right, so let's summarize on the bottom then. This was an example of destructive interference. And the result of that is it was quieter. Um, so I can try to make that a little more clear there. Right in the middle is, uh, right in the middle here, these were overlapping to make no, no sound quieter. And if you're wondering how I was able to make B do the opposite of A, all I did was take the wires going into B and flip them so that, um, yeah, so that the current was always doing the opposite of what the current for A was doing. And it's electric current that's actually creating the sound. So if you feed it opposite current, you're going to get opposite sound. All right, so bring your questions to class so we can talk about this and go over it. I'll see you then.